Are there not places that some of us are walking today that you sit down and say, but why should I be walking here? I know what happens in this corporation. I know that God is not glorified. I know they are serving the devil. I know that the products and services they are involved in, my, it violates my faith. But the day you talk to your husband or wife that I think I should live here, the day you say that thing again, it's with the back of my hand I will slap you. Did you see the last PTA letter of the child? And Satan says, that's it. And a time will come, out of that pain and frustration, the young lady will call her ex-boyfriend and say, just to know if you are fine. It's a lie. Hunger. Taking men from Israel to Egypt. Are we together? This is what I saw coming to Nigeria. This is what I saw coming to Africa. I saw a time and not too distant time when hunger is driving people to do things you cannot believe. Because the many doors of corruption were just closed. This is what I saw in my vision. And because most men only corrupt, they steal and share. And then they steal and share. Then when you get your own, you quickly manage it well. But now that the door is closed, people are saying, what do we do? And I saw people going to this woman to say, I need members. If I don't get members, where will I get offering? And then where will I get tight to be able to survive as a church? So Babylon, let's negotiate. Bring members to get more overflows. My soul will be what will be in exchange. If you ever say this cannot happen, you are joking. Do you know the desperation? Do you know what men can do when they are desperate? Read your Bible and see what... They were willing to go back to Egypt when they were hungry. They left Egypt. I will sing unto the Lord for he has tried up. When they were hungry, they said, we remember. We remember the garlic. We... Hunger will make you forget the promised land. Hunger will make you love your yesterday more than your tomorrow. I remember when I had this boyfriend. I wasn't going to heaven, but I was in heaven on earth. Now that I gave my life to Christ and left this guy, look at how miserable my life is. Oh, let us go back. There is garlic. There is cucumber. Is it not in your Bible? And onions. At least we have food to eat. Moses, we are hungry. Was it not on account of supply that Moses missed the promised land? Have you forgotten that they were thirsty and they needed water and they have been nudging at Moses? No leader can survive a hungry people. I don't mean spiritually hungry. They will nag at you and disturb you day and night. You know, there are people who come to my house. They just come and knock. They knock the gate and stand there. I just open the door and they say, I'm hungry. Sometimes they come as a group. Group of children and just knock and stand there. Do what you would do with us. We are hungry. That's what happened to Moses. And Moses was, God told him, speak to the rock. He was human. Your humanity plus hunger is not good. And he struck the rock. And God said, no, this is it. You are not going to the promised land. It was hunger that made them build an idol. They said, Moses, we are tired. We are not sure that is this your God you saw in the bush that brought us out. Please, Aaron, come. Put jewelries together. We will sacrifice our gold. Build us an idol so that we will dance and say you are the one who brought us out of Egypt. Was it not on account of hunger many parents now stop going to church? And they say, where was God when they sacked me from Railway Corporation 1999? Where was God when I was crying with my sick child on the bed, needing 150,000 to... I, I prayed and I called on pastors, they prayed and I watched my child breathe his last breath on something that could be solved. Don't talk to me about church again. You come to preach and they show you the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and tell you, look, before you were born, I was a prayer coordinator. Hunger 
made me leave the place of God to Egypt. You don't control people by controlling them. You control them by controlling the economy of their territory. The rich rule it over the poor. And the borrower will always be slave to the lender. You will thank me for what I'm teaching you tomorrow. You will thank me. Because you are listening to this message for your children. You are not just listening for yourself. It will take a selfish and a wicked person to not listen to this truth. Then don't have children. Because woe betide any man. I say this respectfully to our parents and the elderly people here. But most of our parents made this mistake. And that is the, the mistake that has produced a negative history for many of the young people seated here looking at me. It was hunger that created the episodes of pain that we do not even want to remember about our lives. Don't transfer that to your children. Hunger made people to marry those who are not the will of God. Hunger made people to be relocated to geographic territories that was not the will of God. Hunger made people to change their age. You will see somebody 50 years by instincts. You know this person is 50 years. He said, no, it's 27. He is. You, you see that? How many footballers have their true age? Just, you don't think I'm just talking. That's what hunger can do. How many people join occultic fraternities? The fact that they are growing in, I hope I'm right, I heard that early this year, they were stealing ladies' underwear or something like that. Now listen, that is not a good news. It's to tell you that men are not ashamed to prosper. Did you hear what I said? Let a lady pile her clothes and say you should wash. And you see if you are angry. But the native doctor said, go and carry, not, not the head tie, carry the underwear and bring it. And the man is not embarrassed. You can pick that underwear as a graduate, as a bubble, and bounce with it to a shrine because you are desperate for prosperity. Which one is easier, to believe God or to do that nonsense? What shall it profit a man? I don't want to get to a point where at the end of my life I have acquired cars and houses. Koinonia has risen and I look at myself and I look at my soul and my soul is dead. Have you ever heard that anybody died and his money went with him? Koinonia, talk to me. Have you ever heard that anybody died and his real estate disappeared and followed him in the grave? No. Any prosperity that demands your soul to get is of the devil. Let me tell you many ways that this business, because this business has franchise. And one of the ways the franchise works is by occupying you with activities that will not let you have time for God. Is that not your soul being sold? It doesn't have to be an occultic negotiation. By the time you have to forfeit a Sunday service where your word is about to come because if you don't your boss will sack you that's your soul going you do that for one year you find out you can't remember one memory verse again you are praying and you will be quoting wise sayings instead of scriptures because you have not hidden any word in your heart again What shall it profit a man? I want to show you one more mystery and then we'll pray. Is God speaking to you? Tonight's call is a serious wake-up call. For the sake of our children and our children's children and for the sake of our soul. Why do you think the Antichrist will leave all other things and go to economy? When you talk about the mark of the beast, what did the Bible say the mark was meant for? For buying and selling. Not for going to school. Not for Bible study. The devil knows that where he will get people. How did they get Nigerians to register BDM? Was it not by the threat of their accounts? Did, did any police carry chain to pursue any man? Register your BDM or your account will be frozen. And people just come and say, please, what? 
I did my Vivian in the night. They opened the bank for me by 8.30. Because I couldn't come in the day. People who were there and harassed me. 8.30 in the night. They opened the bank for me. I said, Apostle, come and do your Vivian. As anointed, as holy, I still did Vivian in the night. When Satan comes to you and finds out that your individualism is not your concern, he will attack your spirituality. When he attacks your spirituality by making you fall from that height, remember that was the temptation, fall from that height, God will protect you. And when you survive that, he knows where to wait for you. He says, keep praying, you will meet me at one junction that is the only road. Only road. He meets you at that junction. It's not a T junction, it's a bend. And he waits there and says, Now, let me negotiate your child's school fees. Let me negotiate. Give me your prayer life and I will give you real estate. Give me the health of your child. Have you not heard of people who have sold different parts of their body for money? Please talk to me. Is it a lie? Give me your fasting and your appetite for God and I will make sure I give you a job in Dubai. And he says, is that the condition? Satan will not come and say, give me your soul like your soul, your heart. Uh -uh. Give me your commitment in the house of God and I will increase your money by 50,000. And he says, commitment, go places. Satan, give me. And Satan is an honest businessman. You will get it. He will give you the 50,000. Then remove commission that will make everything remain 10,000. And say, if you want, I'm still here for business. And before you know it, from settling near Sodom, you will be in the middle of Sodom. What took you there? Why do you think the Bible says, whose God is their belly? The logical thing should be, whose God is their brain? But he said, whose God? Hunger can be a God. And it can make men do things they never planned to 